Drama City You are plugged in for the Podcast Wrestling Society, where you can get dynamic weekly pro wrestling and MMA related content. Give us a follow on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at P-O-D-W-R-E-S Society so that you can stay in the know. Faith is the place, and the sky is the limit. And if you like what you hear, give us a five-star review and hit that subscribe button. Woo! 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 Now, your host, he is the one and only Troy Adams. Viva La Raza! Another Wrestling Wednesday on the podcast Wrestling Society. And remember, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. I'm your loving leader, benevolent host, Midwest Monster, and I lie, I cheat, and I steal for listeners. I am Troy Adams, and bringing his own brand of mild Latino heat to this podcast today, he is the Chavo Guerrero to my Eddie Guerrero. He is Greg. What up, Greg? Oh, delay. Why do I gotta be Chavo? Because I'm your hero. I can think of 47 people more like, suited to be my hero. but Michael Cole? That's one. Ah, <laughs> oh, come on. Dude, i, I got to start off by saying, well, first of all, today's going to be a different day, like a different kind of podcast than, you know. It's previous. a new day. The new day? We're, uh, we're changing some stuff up on the podcast. It's going to be a similar format, but different. I mean, we're not drastically changing a bunch of stuff. We are still reviewing WrestleMania 20, which is one of my favorite events of all time. And uh, well, we're going to do it a little different. You suggested making some changes. I agreed. And we're going to try to keep it a little shorter, more succinct. And we're going to try to bring you some uh, some more person or like personal views and such, rather than just telling you the results and then crapping on it. Which is kind of what we did last that. week. Uh, I tried to keep it a little shorter last week, and I I don't know. We we changed it up a bit, and I think it worked, Greg. I think so, too. We had, I mean, just within one day, we doubled our listeners from the previous two weeks. So that, either you guys really like the Attitude Era or the changes we implemented, you know, were spot on. So there's something. But, uh, yeah, today we're not going to be going over the news, bro. Uh, And and we're also not going to be, like, shilling everything right here at the beginning. I will tell you before we get into the actual subject at hand, you and I had a good time in Cleveland, man. You, me, and Kyle. Hell yeah. You got to mark a couple things off your bucket list by, uh, well, clearly the most important thing to mark off your bucket list was coming to Ohio. (laughs) Well, yeah. I mean, that's not sarcasm. (laughs) Yeah, so there you go, and uh, you got to. Well, part of my list is to uh, go to every all fifty states. So. Oh well, there you it's go. It's kind of it's kind of on there. And you froze. It yeah, was... I'm a California boy, and yeah. I mean, it was cold, but we were by the lake, and there was whipping winds going into fast lane, and my gosh, it was cold. But the rock hall was fun. The uh, football hall was fun. The fast lane was great. Kyle and I will cover all of that on Patreon. If you haven't gone already, definitely go check out patreon.com forward slash pod rest society. Great, uh, great source. You can give us a little bit of dough being a pay, be a paying member of the society. We got some great stuff. And on YouTube, we've got exclusive video from our time in Canton and Cleveland and some pictures as well. So, youtube.com forward slash podcast wrestling society. Unfortunately, we did not get to visit Dayton. I was a little bit mad. Yeah, Dayton! <laughs> so, yeah, that that sucks, but oh well. I'll go there with ACW rules in. Yeah, yeah, well, you gotta go to a Dayton with Destiny. Well, you know, you might be right. <laughs> it's gonna be hard to get tickets to that. I mean, they're gonna be gone quick. The resale value is going to be 10 times high. Yeah. HC Dub, a Dayton with Destiny, and then go a little bit further south to uh, Ball Brown Stadium for a, for a Rumble in the Jungle. 
It'll be good, man. I'm down. Yeah, AJ Give Green and Andy Dalton, man. They're going to be there. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. All right, enough. Yeah, but... For now. Yeah, for now. Uh, but, yeah, going to... Um, before we get into actual WrestleMania 20, there's just one subject I wanted to cover with you, man. And, uh, well, it involves one of your fave five, Roman Reigns, and one of your bottom five, Dave Meltzer. Uncle Dave! I mean my bottom two. <laughs> Who else would be in, in in the bottom two with him? Think about it. Uh... Wow, okay. Uh, I think I know. But regardless, I guess, look, if for those of you who don't listen to the podcast a lot, you're more of the hard-lined, like, you have your side. I try to play down the middle, do the, do the reporter thing. Doesn't always work, but I try to make it work. And I'm going to try to play down the middle with this as much as possible. But don't think I'm defending... Good luck. Certain actions. First of all, I will say this about un- about Uncle Dave. He never once said Roman didn't have leukemia. That's true. I think he was the first one to shut it down. All the all the uh, naysayers. Yeah, he didn't say he doesn't have leukemia. However, uh, he has a way of saying things, and I've known people like this, and they piss me off to no end. Where he doesn't s- come right out and say something. But the way he, like, insinuates certain things with his words makes you think that he's a piece of crap. You know? Yep. Uh, like, what he actually said that kind of pissed people off, he says, and I'm going to read this as he said it because he can't freaking talk. He says, it is serious, you know. There was an NHL player that had the same thing. He, Reigns, had in the 2007 season, uh, who did not miss one game. He played every game while on this, and hockey is a pretty damn demanding sport. So everyone is different, you know, and he didn't take, he actually said the pill was um, oral chemotherapy, but it really, I don't think it was. And he said, the, the pill that I was talking about, and it's a new pill, which is what he said, he didn't give the name of it, like I said, but, um, you know, the treatment for this isn't usually not chemotherapy or radiation. So I don't know. <sighs> and then Ryan Satin, who, you know, we also love on the show, said, Speculating about storylines, upcoming matches, and locker room heat is one thing, but Meltzer saying Roman isn't telling the truth about his cancer treatment is not okay. Many take his word as gospel, and to speculate on such is irresponsible. I don't disagree. Yep. But yeah, and then Dave tried to defend himself, but apparently the kind of, allegedly the kind of uh, leukemia that Roman has, L, and Dave said, you can look up CML anywhere, and it gives you the mortality rate over time. I've written about it, uh, about multiple strains, treatments, side effects, and different mortality rates. I hardly minimized it, given the emphasis that at 33 with kids, any odds are scary, which I said, by the way. He said that because apparently he said uh, something about something to the effect of, well, you know, they said his his chance of dying are only, you know, quote unquote, only five percent. So, you know, (sighs) when there's a one percent chance is bad. Well, Nia Jax also ripped into him and said, Dave Meltzer is a piece of the fact that you make statements about people's health which you have zero knowledge about, it is ridiculous. If you don't, or if you do have access to to Superstar's personal medical info, that is a huge violation of HIPAA, and I'm sure that's not the case, so shut your mouth. (laughs) I wish you would punch him like she did Becky. (laughs) Right? Well, somebody else tweeted him and said, HIPAA prohibits divulging that info, unless he puts it out there, and it's no one's business, but his how severe or not his or how severe or not his condition was and dave just can't let it die man he said that's ridiculous teams in every sport disclose injury and illness reports or uh, of players in any real sport 
This would be common knowledge. And somebody said, so I, I, I can't find the exact tweet, but somebody basically said, so wrestling is a real sport now. <laughs> and what do you say? He didn't reply. He hasn't replied to anybody. Somebody also tweeted and said, NHL teams are pretty tight-lipped as well when it comes to injuries. Yeah. So they're proving him wrong. Somebody else posted a gif of somebody digging a grave deeper. <laughs> One thing Ramon pointed out to me, whenever someone gets hurt on the, um, on the Sharks, they yeah. always say lower body injury, upper body injury. That's all they say. Yeah. And the thing is, like, I didn't, they, notice, I didn't notice that. But he said that. Well, and it's like, and Dave hasn't come right out and said this, but he said he's basically acting like he's entitled to know exactly what's wrong with Roman. And nobody's saying. Well, he's Dave Meltzer. Yeah. Well, and then he turns around and says stuff like, well, you know, I they say he had leukemia, only 5% chance. He left and then he went and filmed a movie and all this other stuff. So he wasn't down and out. It's like... I wasn't bedridden. Yeah. Well, and then he's like, well, you know, an NHL player had the same thing and he didn't miss a single game. Like, my gosh. By the way, I, I like how this newspaper refers to him as a news journalist, Dave Meltzer. Fake that made news. me laugh. This is what made also made me laugh. He said, uh, Dave Meltzer said, this reaction really encourages reporters to not research and do their job and just write vanilla fluff. Thank God for the Peyton Royce thing, because I learned this stuff doesn't matter, and I can just do my job for people who actually expect me to research these types of stories. For those of you who don't know the Peyton Royce thing, he basically insinuated that she's, well, he said she put on a few pounds. I mean, not in those words. And people tore him up. So, eh. Ford Graves did, too. On live TV. Yeah. And he basically said that Roman lied about leukemia being the reason he stopped playing football. His response to that, when people roasted him on it, he said, I never said Roman lied once. I did say in October that was the first timeline issue with him saying his football career was over when he got leukemia, except he played one season of football after. This was explained to me that he considers the season he played uh, Canadian football not part of his football career. I accept he didn't lie. It was just a figure of speech, and it's a non-issue at this point. Good Lord. In other words, leave me alone. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> well, he's an idiot. Well, we knew that. And I can't believe people still buy his stuff. That's what baffles me. He's making legit money from his stupid crap. Yep. I can't stand to listen to him at all. Like, at least Brian Alvarez, even if he's biased, can be entertaining. Dave Meltzer just, like, he's very serious, straight-laced, and he can't take a joke. And he's so full of himself. I just can't stand it. Which is ironic, because he is a joke. Basically. Well, I don't know. That's that. I stopped getting mad at him a long time ago. It's the same crap with him, so. Yeah. Well, uh, to let you all know, by the way, obviously the subject to hand today is not Dave Meltzer. Thank God. I don't want to spend an hour on him. Coming soon. Yeah. But uh, it is WrestleMania 20. It was March 14th, 2004 from Madison Square Garden. We're going back, Greg. The earliest WrestleMania in history. Yep. It was actually closer to February than it was April. Yeah, that's really weird. Like, I wonder why they did that. Uh, my only guess was the Garden was, yeah, I was gonna say was were, by the Knicks or the Rangers or something. Or? I was going to say, were the Knicks going to the... I, I was, I was going to say something really funny. I was going to say, were the Knicks going to the playoffs? <laughs> Please. Yeah. Uh, it could have been the Rangers, too. Let's not count them out. Yeah. They're usually pretty good, so... Yeah, Rangers are usually pretty good. Uh, but yeah, attendance... We're going to see them in a few weeks. Oh, good for you. Uh, the attendance was 18,500. So, there you go. That was Would one of the uh, many WrestleManias took place in the New York metropolitan area along with one, two, well, one-third of two, I guess. Ten, twenty-nine, and thirty-five. Do you want to take our first break before we dive into the actual show, though, Greg? I guess. All right. Well, this this was a very I first... I gotta go pay- take a Meltzer and wipe my... <laughs> Dave, anyway, so... Yeah. Well, this was the very first pay-per-view I ever ordered, so this has special meaning to me, and it's very near and dear to my heart. 
So it's going to be fun to cover it all. When we come back from this first good. break, we'll dive into all that was WrestleMania 20. It's going to be good. And also, go to dramacityproductions.com forward slash PWS, and you can see two buttons there. Not only just all of our archived podcasts, but you can also see two buttons. One says merch. One says more merch. Click on merch. It will take you to one of our uh, store online stores. The other one will take you to the other. There's our Redbubble and Spreadshirt store. Go check them out. Just uh, scroll through the merch and see if there's anything there you like for yourself or somebody you know who is a loyal listener. Great gifts, cool stuff to wear around. I'm going to order it myself because I like my own merch that much. Good stuff. And when we come back from letting you know about some other great Drama City Productions podcasts, we will dive right into the 20th WrestleMania in history. We'll be right back. Drama City You don't listen to the heavyweight jumps? Well, they're only the greatest podcast that wrestles with pop culture. You don't believe us? Well, listen to some of their fans. And for those of you that don't speak cricket, here's our translator, Mr. Harlan T. Bobo. It's like cotton candy in my ears right now, man. <laughs> The Heavyweight Chumps. You can find us on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, and Stitcher. Every Monday and Thursday, same fat time, same, same fat, fat channel. channel. Drama, Drama City Productions.com. Hey, it's Chris from the Stackcast. Join myself, Christian, and Missy as we bring you all the gaming news you need to know. With our penchant for sarcasm, we're throwing out all the social justice bullshit and are giving you 100% uncensored gaming news and opinion. So follow us down the rabbit hole that is our minds, and may God have mercy on your ears. All right, we are back, and that means, Greg, you and I are diving headfirst into WrestleMania 20. This Whoosh. Was, this was, uh... Man, I'll tell you what, this was a really good show and had a lot of great storylines leading into it, in my opinion. Uh, two out of ten. Yeah, sure. I mean, we're, like I said before, we're not going to run down everything that happened you know, throughout the whole show. But we're going to kind of go through the matches and kind of tell you stuff around it and you know what uh, we experienced at the time and you know what the, what was to come out of it. You know, the first, the opening match was probably, oddly enough, one of the biggest ones. It wasn't exactly a good match. It didn't suck. But it was just historic because of what it launched. John Cena defeated the Big Show for the U.S. title do, 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 do. in 9 minutes, 14 seconds. I'll tell you what, man. Yeah, he did in a very heel kind of way, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, he punched him in the face with his uh, with his brass knucks, didn't he? Yep. And then hit the F U, not the AA. Yeah, it was John Cena's first major title, well, first title period, on uh, in the WWE. I remember this. Like right after this, didn't he go into a feud with Carlito? Not not too long after. Uh, that was that was at the end of the year. Oh, okay. Well. So yes, yeah, so it was kind of long after. Yeah. Well, I remember um, he got the. Uh, that spinner, his very first ever spinner title. And I know the purists hated it, but I was... Shoot, what year did this take place, Greg? Um, 04. 04. So I was 13 at the time. So I thought it was... I thought the spinner U.S. title was sweet. I don't know about you. Mm, hated it. <laughs> yeah, most people did. I was like... There was like me and a handful of kids that liked it. Now, the WWE title, I went back and forth on that one. I will say, after, uh, like, a year or two, I absolutely hated it. Because I'm like, why is this still around? Yeah, it shouldn't have been for anybody but him. Yeah. Like, nobody carried around the, the Smoke and Skull title consistently back in the I Attitude wish. Era. Except for Stone Cold. But I don't know. Uh, was it was the U.S. title, that was that the one that JBL dropped in the garbage, or... Or was it the WWE one? It was the WWE one. Okay. No, yeah, it was the US one. It was the US one. 
Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, he was he called it a piece of crap. He he Daniel Bryan it. <laughs> But he kind of did it, it. He did it in reverse, though. He he dropped the custom one in the garbage and pulled out the uh, the classic. Oh, I remember. He, it wasn't him. It was Orlando Jordan was the champ. But yeah, JBL did it. Oh, okay, that's right. Yeah, because JBL's U.S. title run came at uh, towards the end of his career there, not the beginning. And I say the beginning because it was the beginning of the JBL character, not the beginning of like. I mean, he'd been around for ages. Oh yeah, that great era. <laughs> Well, hell yeah, man. Brad Shaw. Justin Hawk Brad Shaw. Brad Shaw. Sounds like a Disco Inferno name. What the hell? Well, up next, after that historic match, was this. It was La Resistance versus Garrison Cade and Mark Jindrak versus the Dudley Boys versus Booker T and Rob Van Dam for the WWE Championships. <laughs> Skip it. Fatal four. No one cares. Well, for all of you, uh, Booker and RVD retained. Don't you remember that sweet remix of their song, man? It was ass. Ass. They took a great song like RVD's and mixed it with that crap. Didn't they mix it with Can You Dig It from the originals? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it wasn't even Booker T's real theme. It was like that. For those of you, throw it in your YouTube machine there. Uh, Check out from the WWE original CD, it's Can You Dig It by Booker T. It was bad. Uh, <laughs> and they mixed it with One of a Kind, and it was very bad. Uh, 7 minutes, 51 seconds. Next up, this one actually had a an odd freaking storyline, and we got a swerve, bro! It was Chris Jericho versus Christian. They were feuding over Trish Stratus. Yeah, I'd fight for her, too. Yeah, who wouldn't? This this one was really good. Went on for fifteen minutes, and but the end, man. Uh, Trish Stratus came in, and like Christian dra- Christian grabs her, throws her to the mat. She inadvertently elbows Jericho. And Christian gets a win, and then then at the end of the match, she just slaps the hell out of Jericho, who is the babyface, and she goes and like makes out with Christian on the stage. This was odd, but the match was good. Kind of went nowhere after that and fell flat, so. I know. Uh, I mean, Trish became like a mega heel, but yeah, you're right. After, I mean, this storyline didn't really. Oddly enough, the person that wasn't even in the match, I feel like it did more for her. Am I wrong? No, I can't even remember off the top of my head what those two did next. I don't know. They'd already done the vitamin C Christian and uh, Chris Jericho gimmick. Uh, but WrestleMania 20, this was a return after a while of... Uh, the Rock had been gone for a little while. He was a, a heel. He was a heel! Last time we saw him. <clears throat> Mother effer! <laughs> but this time he came out of a Hollywood box. And he was no longer Hollywood oh, Rock. Over. He was the the regular Rock, and he was teaming up with his old pal Mick Foley, the Rock and Sock Connection man, taking on Evolution's Ric Flair, Batista, and Randy Orton in a handicap match. You know what was weird about this was this was like Ric Flair's second WrestleMania ever. Yeah. That's so weird to think about. He's only been at, what, four WrestleManias? Five, maybe? I, I can't even remember. He he hasn't been at that many before he got retired. But this one was something. My favorite part of this whole thing was the interview in the back, like where The Rock is like walking around, cutting a promo in the backstage area, and he he pulls back a curtain and he sees like uh, Hurricane and Rosie eating McDonald's. He, yeah, the Hamburglar. Yeah, he calls him the Hamburglar and Grimace. Oh man. I miss The Rock, dude. But guess what? This was not Russo booking, because the three beat the two. <laughs> yeah. If this was Russo booking, he's uh, like, bro, the fewer guys gotta beat the more guys, bro. Uh, I was WCW Russo, to be fair. Nah. Well, Orton countered with an RKO uh, on Mick Foley. It's like, he did a maintable claw, he countered, hit an RKO. He wins Evolution. 
gets it. That one actually went on for 17 minutes, dude. It wasn't that good either. No, it was like, it was a novelty act that went on way too long. Speaking of a novelty act, but this one only, this one was less than three minutes. The Playboy Evening Gown Match. <laughs> Tori Wilson and Sable um, defeated Miss Jackie and Stacy Keebler. This is a five-star classic, by the way. I'll tell you what, man. I don't remember a damn thing about this match. Well, how old were you again? Uh, 13. So you probably did hit puberty. I don't get it. Well, I mean, I'm sure at the time I was like, awesome, but I just, I don't know. Oh, this is a cool match. What's going on down there? What the hell? Are you ready? I'm done! <laughs> uh, basically, Jackie goes to the outside, gets flipped in, uh, and Sable and Tori rip her dress off. Tori Wilson then pins Miss Jackie. Future Hall of Famer Tori Wilson, I should say. God, don't remind me. That's something else of Dave Meltzer, man. We forgot to mention. Not only are him and Brian Alvarez talk about how ridiculous it is that Tori Wilson goes in and... All right, sure, maybe. Uh, but he flat out said... like He, he mocked the fact that Stevie F. and Ray is going in. Which, I will say this. You and I have trashed him multiple times on this podcast. Like, you know, the fact that he was not very good. But... no. But the Harlem Heat's a stork. Yeah, well, and, but plus the fact that he's not going... If he was going in by himself, sure, yeah, screw that. But he's going in as one half of Harlem Heat, which was a historic tag team. That's like... Well, maybe Uncle Dave don't like black folks or something. I, I don't know, man. Like, that's like saying... Like, like is Road Warrior Animal going to go into the Hall of Fame? Hell no. <laughs> The Legion of Doom, the Road Warriors, yes, they went into the Hall of Fame. Like, come on, man. The funniest right, thing enough was... enough Uncle Dave. It's ticking me off. The funniest thing was Stevie Ray's tweet, which, by the way, <laughs> Stevie Ray does not have the blue check mark on Twitter. Yeah, I don't worry. I'm, uh, I'm going to have that happen for him. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> I know you'll, people. You'll, you'll <laughs> talk to your connections. Stevie <laughs> F and Ray. I wish, I wish his handle, because his handle is at real Stevie Ray. I wish his handle was at Stevie F and Ray. That'd be hilarious. Maybe he doesn't listen to Conrad. <laughs> yeah. Well, his tweet was kind of funny, and I'll tell you why. Like, part of it, okay. He said, in Dave Meltzer's opinion, I'm not worthy of the WWE Hall of Fame. That's fine, because that's his opinion. This is the funny part. He said, but I was voted in by my peers. <laughs> Were you? Um, I don't know how it works, though. So. Dude, like, Vince McMahon is the only one who decides who, who goes in the Hall of Fame. There's no voting. <laughs> what is he talking about? Is that like... Who cares? Is that, who cares? I don't care. I just, well, it's like, is that the story I, that people, like, they told him, they're like, uh, say you were voted in. Like, there's no voting. Many people have said, they're like, it's Vince's call. He decides who goes in, who doesn't go in. That's it. Like, and it's on a whim. One year, he's like, ah, screw him. He's not going in. Next year, he's like, hey, what about this guy? <laughs> but he said, I got respect in this business, which is more than I can say for him. When the Hall of Fame is over, fans will get to hear what I really think of Dave. Dude, <laughs> what if he shoots on him during his uh, his Hall of Fame induction speech? All right. They're probably going to ban him from saying anything. Uh, I'm sure. Yeah. Either way. Uh, next up. Uh, I I remember this match, the cruiserweight open for the cruiserweight championship. Eleven. Oh, and I remember. I remember it very well. I remember Ultimo Dragon's entrance. <laughs> yeah, where he like ran out and the fire just went off, and he it was just kind of like no, whatever. no, no. He slipped on his cape and fell on his face. Oh, <laughs> I forgot <laughs> about that. Oh, man. Uh, but it was great. And then the match happened, and I didn't give a damn. Well, the champion going into this was Chavo. Was it Chavo Jr., right? Yeah. Or, okay. Uh, uh, he won it the, the, the month prior at No Way Out, which I was okay. at. Good for you. Well, yeah, because I was. Wow. He, him and him and Eddie both won their belts. Cool. Uh, but 
Yeah, Elf? so it was Chavo Guerrero versus with Chavo Classic versus Nunzio, Jamie Noble, Akio, Tajiri, Funaki, Shannon Moore, Ultimo Dragon, Billy Kidman, and Rey Mysterio. Oh, I'm gassed just reading those names. <laughs> I don't really remember. I mean, okay. Chavo wins with a roll-up with Chavo Sr.'s help. That's all I know. <laughs> uh, I really thought Rey Mysterio was going to win it here. Yeah. Uh, it's two years in a row he got screwed out of the Cruiserweight title WrestleMania. I will say this. I liked Chavo Guerrero's run with the Cruiserweight Championship at the time. It was something about him. So I was like, well, Eddie's doing his thing. Give Chavo some time. Why? I don't know. I always, I've always been like, I mean, not like a huge fan it's of Chavo. It's not like they were a major tag team and they were both like the guy and one of them got it and the other didn't. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I, like I didn't Chavo. care one way or another. It was like, Chavo Guerrero, yay. I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I just I th- never really cared for him. I'm sorry. Eh, I thought it Chavo was... to me. Just... I thought Chavo was good in his position uh, as a cruiserweight champion. I thought he did as well a cruiserweight for... cruiserweight jobber? Yes, he was great. Wow. I can lay down like nobody's business. <laughs> I, I always enjoyed his, his, his stuff here. I mean, here in WWE. Oh, he definitely it's... wasn't bad. It's just, I don't know, there's... I like some missing like his stuff in WCW yeah. was was pretty entertaining. Uh, his stuff here I thought was good. I thought this was this was the only time I really cared about him. When he was in like ECW, I didn't care. Like that's when uh, he was a world champion. Yeah. So you didn't care when he won a world title. Because by then I kind of cooled on him. I was like, eh. And then they so, so you cooled on him at his peak. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, we'll call the WC or the ECW title his peak. Well, that like, was when he was the top guy at, at one point. Yeah, he was the only top guy position ever. Yeah. <laughs> oh uh, man. The, I like I said, I liked him in this position. I didn't think he was a top guy. I thought he was a great mid carter. But yeah, so nothing really remarkable about this one. Um, the next one though, oh, God, this was the one everybody talks about. It was. Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar with special guest referee Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, hell yeah. Dude, I I don't know about you. Were you... Did you ever pay attention to, like, the dirt sheets and stuff at this time? No. Neither did I. Dude, I honestly, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't either until JR said it on commentary. Yeah, I was like, why are they, like... They were booing both guys. Yep. I'm like... What the hell is going on? Like, New York ripped them apart. I mean, I don't think anything they could have done would have turned that crowd. But they also didn't even try. Like, this match sucked. It was... Well, they were both on the way out. They didn't have to try. And I don't think this was... I mean, it wasn't like a botch fest or, you know, they did anything poorly. It was just super boring they just did a bunch of lockups some military presses crap like that wasn't anything great stone cold just dude stone cold looked bored man <laughs> i don't know he said he felt bad for him because he was like oh, i he's like i almost started hitting the ropes just to get some kind of reaction <laughs> it was bad but Goldberg won in the end, Jack Ham- Spear, Jackhammer. Stunner. And then at the end, Austin and Goldberg celebrate with beers. Austin stuns Goldberg. Down goes Goldie! I like how Jim Ross is like, Austin just stunned Brock Lesnar out of the WWE ring. Like, he meant the WWE, though, right? <laughs> yeah. Basically. Yeah, that's right. He stunned Lesnar before the beer thing, and then he stunned Goldberg. Basically saying F you to both guys. They were gone. I don't know. That, that match sucked. Forever, good, bro. Thing, good thing they made up for it later on. At least in my opinion. Like, right? I mean, like, I think you're with me on that one. Well, yeah, I was there, too. And I was giddy for Goldberg the whole time. And I knew he was probably going to lose. But yes, it was way better. Yeah. Well, then this next match, 
They had to have it for both belts back in the day. Or, excuse me, championships, pal. There it is. Uh, this one was... It's back in the day, they had the Raw World Heavyweight Tag Team... Or, or, no, it was World Tag Team Titles. And then the WWE Tag Team Titles on SmackDown. So I guess there's the World, and then there's WWE. <laughs> Which would you rather be the champion of? The World. I want to be the World Tag Team Champion of the World. <laughs> wow. Well, this one was something. Scotty Too Hotty and Rikishi defended the championships against the world's greatest tag team, uh, Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin, the APA with the aforementioned JBL and uh, Ron Simmons, and the Basham Brothers, who were super into BDSM. And let's not even talk about it, because we'll put them asleep quicker than the match did. Yeah, now... It was a fatal four-way, six minutes long. So Kishi yeah. and Scotty win. You can hear a pin drop during the celebration. <laughs> That's how bad it was. <laughs> Go back and listen. You can literally hear no crowd. You'd think yeah. they're just doing this in the middle of an empty arena. But they danced, bad. man. Yeah, for nobody. They have to dance. Got to get it in, Kishi bro. must dance. Yeah. You know, Booker T and RVD won earlier. Booker danced with the spinner Rooney. Then uh, Rikishi and and uh, Scotty win. They dance. This was weird. Speaking of weird, Molly Holly versus Victoria. If Molly loses, she will shave her head. It was it was hair versus title. Victoria, or as some of you may know her, Tara from TNA. It was hair from man. She if was a you know her as that, you just stop watching, okay? Yeah, basically. This was oh, just shy Victoria, of seven I, I know her when she was Tara. Said no one ever. <laughs> hey, whoa. Speaking of the TNA marks out there, okay? All five of them. All five of them, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the match was not terrible. Yeah, it was. Victoria, Victoria was won with a backslide food. pin. And... You know what happened to Molly's hair, Greg? Yeah. It's gone forever, it sh- bro. Shaved it. It was gone forever, bro. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, that was that. This next Apparently match. She uh, only had it shaved because she wanted a WrestleMania moment. And she said yeah, that's all but, she could do to get it. <laughs> that's pathetic. Because Molly Holly was great. Uh, and not bad on the eyes, either. Same with Victoria. Like, why would you not want to do, you know, put those two on the card? Just, I, that's not where I, I thought you were know. going. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> the hell. That's like, no, we got to we got to get two tag team title fatal four ways in there, bro. That nobody gave yeah. a damn about. Priorities, man. Well, yeah. Uh these next three matches are really the only ones that really matter on this card. But they were great. Eddie Guerrero defends the WWE title against Kurt Angle, who is apparently retiring after WrestleMania. Yeah. So do you think he's going to pull a Ric Flair, or is he really going to retire? Yeah, he's going to pull a Ric Flair and go to AEW and wrestle. He's going he's gonna to pull a Ric Flair and go to HCW, bro. <laughs> Swerve! The gold medalist versus the hobo that found a fake gold medal in the trash. <laughs> he's wearing a cookie sheet around his neck. Oh, this match, dude, was... This was freaking great, man. Two and a half stars. This was like a five-star match, dude. Like, it was freaking great. You can't put these two in the ring and not have a classic. Uh, The big thing was that Kurt kept locking in the ankle lock and hurting uh Eddie's ankle. So he, like, loosened his boot, saying, like, his ankle was swelling up, so he had to relieve some pressure. So the end was, he goes for the ankle lock again, Eddie slips out of the boot, and does, like, a roll-through cradle pin for the win. Freaking great. That was an amazing ending. I didn't see that coming. Like, oh, man, I loved it. And Eddie gets his WrestleMania moment against one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. I don't know, man. He had a pretty good WrestleMania moment at 17. Perry Saturn in that hat. 
Oh my yeah, I God. loved it. What about WrestleMania 16 when he was in that six man tag? Or six person oh, yeah. tag, excuse me. Didn't he get a stink face that night? You're right. <laughs> he did the job to two mid card joke acts and a woman. Good stuff, man. Thank God he had this. But yeah, uh, I, I know you were a big Eddie fan. Oh, Hell, yeah. You were, th- you were this there. This is when only he won the belt. four weeks after he won the title. Yeah. I was still on a high. So I'm sure you were flipping out. This was great. Uh, I was a huge Eddie Guerrero fan. Like during, from the time he started, uh, him and him and Chavo were doing the Los Guerreros gimmick, all the way up until he like, I was a huge Eddie fan. Uh, and he had awesome but, mullet at one point. Well, hell yeah, he did. High and tight. I was so mad when he cut it off. It's like, where's the mullet, man? He should have, if he kept the mullet, he could have came riding out in a Camaro blasting fog hat. Hell yes. <laughs> then he gets out of the car and he's, he pulls his lottery scratchers out of his pocket, throws them in the passenger seat, I'm takes listening. a swig of his beer and slides in the ring. Wow, he went from like, never mind, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but yeah, so can't put it, put that match over enough, man. Classic. Instant classic. This next match wasn't exactly a classic, but man, the story behind it, dude. Like, me as an Undertaker fan, I was like, this was the only match I was like, I was like super anticipating this moment. Well, I was not sure what he was coming back as. Yeah, I was like, he's gotta be the dead man, right? He has to be. And I guess... Like, I think it was a SmackDown magazine, because they used to have Raw and SmackDown magazines. Um, for, throw it in your Google machine if you don't know what I'm talking about. But apparently they flat out said the dead man returns at WrestleMania. So I still feel he should have changed his name, but whatever. Well, yeah, because when he was the American badass, he should have been, and, and Big Evil, he should have been Mark <laughs> Calloway, clearly. <laughs> this was said. Yeah, by somebody we're not going to mention. But yeah, so they built it up. Like, Take me through, in case I I forget anything here, Greg. Like Back at Survivor Series, he was in Buried Alive against... Uh, Vince, Vince McMahon. Vince, yeah. And Kane and then, came out and helped him bury The Undertaker. Yep. And then... Because he said he hated him still and he never forgave him. Yeah. So throughout... All of December, uh, January, and February, all the way up to WrestleMania, he held, like, a funeral for him. He talked crap about him. And then we started getting, like, the the lights would go out, the gong would sound. Yeah, it started started at the Royal Rumble. Oh, did it? Okay. The lights went out and said the dead man's returning. Yeah, and then... It started happening more often. Started playing some creepy video on the screen. Kane acted like he was like scared out of his mind. The devil's favorite libertarian, by the way. And I was like, yes. Tennessee tell- registered voters. <laughs> I'll tell you this. I loved American Badass for what it was. But I was so happy he was coming back as his dead man. Like, how did you feel about it? I was on the fence. Yeah. I was like, we've well, already seen this. And he's got short hair. It's going to look weird. That's all, That was my <laughs> first thing. He was the hybrid taker. Because I guess that was the, the compromise. Because I guess he did not want to do it. He said, it's been done. I can't go back. I have to. I'm, I'm the biker now. I'm this. And they had to fight with him. And... They said, you don't, because his whole thing is he didn't want to go back to wrestling like a zombie, you know? And they said, dude, you don't have to do that. They said, just work your same style, but you're, but you're the dead man. And he eventually gave in and did it, obviously. But, oh, man, when, when Kane came out for this and the lights drop and you hear Paul Bear, oh, yes, like, I flipped my crap, dude. And then you had the Druids and. 
Oh, yeah. He had the full thing. The fire, the druids, Paul Bearer with the urn. They went all out, man. I will say this, like, and it's not like it's, you know, not known, but Paul was quite a bit heavier at this point. <laughs> to the point of where, like, Bruce Pritchard said that in the back, they were actually concerned. Paul himself was concerned saying that they didn't know if he was if he was physically able to walk up the steps to the ring. Wow, really? Yeah. He was that bad off because he had let himself go a lot. Not that he was skinny before, but, you know, he put on a lot of weight. And to, what what match was it? It might have been multiple. But during this run, I think he was chased around the ring at one point, and he ran at half the speed of smell. Um, I don't know. Maybe against any Facebook or T at some point, Undertaker did, so. Yeah, I, I can't remember because I'm getting my timeline mixed up of when Paul was gone. But either way. Yeah, I guess that's why they finally sent Paul home was because of his health. So, but yeah, I mean, if you're looking for a classic, this this was not it, man. Uh, Undertaker basically basically came in and just kicked seven shades of crap out of Kane. Uh, Kane had a bit of a comeback. Didn't really do much. The match was less... It, it, it was just shy of eight minutes, so it wasn't very long. Undertaker hit all of his moves, pinned him with a, a uh, tombstone. There you go. Ball game. Basically. I, it was just... It was a means to an end. I forget. Did they have a rematch, or was this kind of it? That was it. They were on different brands. Ah, yeah, that's right, because Taker went back to SmackDown. Yeah, so that was that. He had, let's just say, a not-so-fantastic rest of his year, either. <laughs> I, yeah, I'd say so. I can't think of one opponent that I was like, man, do you remember when Undertaker went against that guy? Yeah. This year Please. and the next one. He went right into a few of Booker T and then the Dudleys and then JBL and then Heidenreich. Suck, 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 suck. And I'm not saying <laughs> Booker and the Dudleys suck, but like those feuds sucked. Like why? Yep. Because screw you. The only thing I remember about the, about the feud with the Dudleys was they were Paul Heyman's guys. They were Paul Heyman guys. And yeah. he uh he had that whole thing where if Undertaker didn't do what he wanted, he was going to kill Paul Bearer. And then Undertaker wins and kills Paul Bearer. What the hell? I know I'm kind uh, of veering off the subject here, but it's just like, dang. Guys, they had to get rid of him. I had to get rid of him forever. You kill him, bro. Yeah, so let's have the Undertaker just be like, ah. And they had some crappy explanation for it. You know, he murdered him. And then he murdered Muhammad Hassan on pay-per-view in this same run. Good times. Only a year apart, right? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, Great American Bash. Two years in a row. Uh, apparently, Great American Bash was signal for The Undertaker to murder somebody. Good thing they did away with it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing oh, says America man. like an undead zombie wizard committing murder. Kill him! But this last match, do you get uncomfortable talking about this? Not really. Yeah, I mean, it some people are... Is. I mean, it is what it is. We know what happened. Calm down, people. Like, we're going to talk about it. The match was fantastic. It was Triple H defending the World Heavyweight title against Shawn Michaels and Chris Benoit. The way, because Sean was feuding with Triple H, correct? Yeah. And Chris Benoit won the Royal Rumble. He was on SmackDown, but he decided to go to Raw. And Sean still wanted that match against Triple H. So before Benoit could sign his contract in the ring, Sean took him out and then signed the contract. But Benoit still had his shot, so now he had. There were two contenders. Yeah, I hated it. Really? 
Should have been one on one. I mean, I, I hated it so much. I don't disagree. The match was amazing, but I just, yeah, even to this day, it was like that was stupid. They could have had the triple threat the next month at Backlash, like they ended up doing anyway. Yeah, I was gonna say they did it anyway. <laughs> but the funny thing was, I'll get to it in a minute. But yeah, this was an amazing match. I was torn on it because I was with you, but at the same time, I love Shawn Michaels. So, but I was a big Benoit fan at this time, dude. I it is this was a history making moment for many reasons, but this was the first ever triple threat match to close out a WrestleMania, and the way it ended was Benoit counters a pedigree into a crippler or crossface, and Triple freaking H tapped out. Keep in mind, this was during his reign of terror, as many people call it. And so I was like, holy crap, he tapped out clean to Chris Benoit. Yeah, after like five minutes. <laughs> yeah. So, gotta make him look strong, pal. But still, I was just, I was so shocked as a kid. I was like, there's no freaking way he's making Triple H tap out. And then when he did, I was like, holy crap, Triple H tapped out, clean! And what was funny was they redid this match, like you said, the next month at Backlash, and he made Sean tap out to the sharpshooter. Yep. So he got them both in. I believe it was in Canada, too. Oh, man. There you go. For those of you who have never seen this match, I would definitely encourage you go out of your way go see it some people say oh I, it makes me uncomfortable whatever i'm like all right well whatever but it's a great match so but after the match it was a big moment eddie guerrero came out with his title benoit's with his title they hug while confetti's dropping from the ceiling i gotta ask why didn't roman get confetti when he beat triple h <laughs> Uh, maybe they have nowhere to put it in Jerry's World or something. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, they'd have no reason to drop confetti in Jerry's World ever. So. Oh my gosh, you're a dick. Uh, uh any cowboy fans? Uh, I I'm not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, he really does hate you. So I just putting that out there. <laughs> but yeah, I, it was a great moment. I I miss the confetti, man. They don't do it anymore in WWE. Oh, we thought, we thought we were going to get some at Fastlane. Remember, we saw some drop. Yeah, we were like, the hell? Uh, it was residuals, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, so I, I don't know. But You know, we say that, well, you know, I, I miss co- confetti in WWE. You remember when TNA used to abuse the hell out of confetti? Yes. <laughs> Every time somebody won the title. RVD, AJ Styles, Bobby Roode, confetti. <laughs> Can you imagine trying to clean out the impact zone? Must have taken well, them I five whole minutes. I guess they could minutes. get any pyro in there. Yeah. Must have taken them a whole five minutes to clean that thing out. Like, God, that's ridiculous. Man. If they were taking the time, it might have took up to seven. Yeah. We're going to hell. We're getting a letter. <laughs> Pissed off them five TNA fans again. Well, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Send us a pic of your burgundy pants. <laughs> Oh, man. Obviously, Chris Benoit brings his wife and kids into the ring with him, and yeah, it's a little hard to watch now, knowing what happened. But at the time, this was fantastic. I almost cried, bro. Almost cried, bro! (laughs) But, yeah, so uh, if you can, you know, definitely go check it out. Great match. Uh, I would have given it about four stars, man. I loved it. But, yeah, so that does it for Mania. Uh, we're going to take our final break here in a minute, unless you have anything to say about the match still. No, I just love that moment at the end. It's still one of my all-time favorites. Yeah, that picture. Just that vision of Eddie and, and Chris hugging, holding their titles. Two guys you never thought would be champion at WWE broke the mold. It was great. It was good! But uh, before we take our last commercial break here, or promo break here, uh, I want to let you guys know about WrestlingWithWrestling.com. If you go there, they got all the latest, greatest 
news from across the wrestling world, whether it's the big time or indies or whatever, here in the States or abroad, they've got interviews, podcasts like this one, uh, videos, match clips, interviews, tons of stuff. Great stuff. Go there right now. Uh, and they also have reviews. So if there's like something you want to know, hey, what's going on in Pro Wrestling Noah or, you know, AAA or whatever, they got it for you. Go check it out. So that's wrestlingwithwrestling.com, covering all four corners of the ring. And we're going to take our final promo break right here and let you know about some other great Drama City Productions podcasts here on the network. When we come back, we'll kind of wrap it up. Uh, give you some, re- give you our final thoughts, some reception on the show, and we'll let you know what's coming next week. We'll be right back. Sometimes you want to go where nobody knows your name. The Small Town Mentality Podcast with Ben and Austin. What's up, guys? Excuse me, it's ma'am. It is ma'am. It's your host, Ben and Austin, from the Small Town Mentality Podcast. And if you're some real cool dudes... Oh, my bad. We got to keep a PC for this promo. You can follow us on Twitter at STMPod, on Instagram at Small Town Mentality Podcast, and on Facebook at STMPod. You can find us everywhere podcasts are played. Yep. So if you're some real cool dudes. Excuse me, it's ma'am. It is ma'am. My bad, sir. I didn't mean to call you that. Excuse me, it's ma'am. It is ma'am. I'll keep that in mind next time we have it up. <laughs> Come check us out. Small Town Mentality Podcast. Excuse me, it's ma'am. It is ma'am. I didn't even say sir that time. We're back from our final break, and that means we're going to wrap things up here, give you a little reception from the event. All in all, what do you think, Greg? Mm, Pretty solid. I'm not as big on it, though, as everyone else is. I still... I, I mean, it holds it. A... Some people call it the best ever. I highly doubt that. But... Ah, yeah. I wouldn't. No. I mean, look at some of these matches. I mean, you had the the real good matches on the card. I mean, you got Christian and Jericho. I guess Victor- Victoria and Molly Holly were okay. Uh, Eddie and Kurt. Taker and Kane wasn't a great match, but it was, you know, cool. And then the triple threat at the end. That was it. Everything else was like, meh. It was cool seeing the the Rock and Sock connection back together again, but they're in a handicap match against Evolution. Yeah, and those tag matches didn't do it for me either. I'll say this. As a kid, I was fine with them. Looking back, I'm like, meh. And, I mean, the opening opening match, John Cena versus Big Show, it was what it was. It was never going to be a classic, but it's historic, only because of what came after. That's fair. Yeah. I don't know. I'd put it in my top five for sure. That'd be tough for me. Nah. I still say 17 was best of all time. 19 may be number two. Maybe. That, maybe number three. I might. I might put 14 as number two, but I don't know. Either way, it was good. Going over some some of this, as four one one mania gave the event an overall score of seven point three out of ten. Man, they got real specific. Averaged out every match. And <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. Uh, they said this is a very long show with a lot of filler to get as many people as possible involved, but the main matches all delivered in some way. The two main title matches were fantastic, but the handicap match was a blast. Was it? I, no. (laughs) Yeah, like, okay. Uh, You throw in a strong Jericho Christian match and the unique crowd response of Goldberg Lesnar, and you have a strong WrestleMania. Uh, sure? (laughs) Oh, Oh, man, man. yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, this is... (laughs) This was something. Uh, he cited Robert Lighty, I think, Jr. of 411 Mania, also cited the event main event as the greatest three-way match in the history of professional wrestling. Everything was perfect about the match, including the finish. 
that's a crowded field. Yeah. But let's look at their measuring stick. Yeah. Canadian Online Explorer's professional wrestling section rated the entire event a 4 out of 10. Wow. That's harsh. I wouldn't go that bad. Yeah, that's ridiculous. They said it was worse than WrestleMania 19. I might agree, but at the time I watched it, I didn't really have a point of reference because I hadn't seen 19, so... Uh, they said the triple threat match between Shawn Michaels, Chris Benoit, and Triple H, uh, they gave it a 7.5 out of 10 stars. 10 stars? Why is that the, why is that the ceiling? I don't know, you, see, you said that last week, I don't know, I don't know, I mean, I'm, everyone's weird. With Uncle Dave, it's like 5, I guess. And the rare 6 and 7. Yeah. Well, it's not rare if it's Kenny Omega or... Kazuchika Okada. Oh, yeah. It's rare if it's not seven stars for them. But yeah. Yeah, right. Uh, the match between Eddie Guerrero and Kurt Angle for the WWE title was rated seven out of ten. And Undertaker Kane got two out of ten. Two out of ten? Was it that effing bad? No, well, what we're talking about here. I think two out of ten stars for Taker Kane was a little harsh. Yeah, I don't get that either. <laughs> and then uh I thought it was you know they had better matches but yeah that was a little rough and then they gave Goldberg Brock Lesnar the lowest rating of the matches with a rating of 0 out of 10 bro I think I still think that was a little harsh I mean sure the match sucked but they gave it a dud they tried they tried their best uh, the triple threat match was also placed number two on IGN's list of top 20 matches in WrestleMania history. That's yeah, another one. I don't I know mean, what, I don't know where I'd put it. Well, you know, it was just Triple H and Shawn Michaels wrestling each other. Oh, well, yeah. With Stevie Richards. <laughs> oh, man. But all right. That about does it uh, for this one here today. You have any final thoughts on WrestleMania 20, Greg? It's definitely in the top 20. Wow. Uh, awfully generous of you there. But, uh, yeah, so I, I loved it as a kid, watching it the first time, my first WrestleMania, uh, I mean, that I saw live. It was fantastic. I loved it. But, obviously, it wasn't the best. I don't know, it was just historic. Unfortunately, the main event is marred in so much controversy because of what happened after but whatever. Mm, not directly after, though. Well, no. But yeah, so it is what it is. But either way, uh, next week, you and I, man, WrestleMania 25. I, I think we have a vastly different opinion of this WrestleMania. Really? I think we do, if I remember right. I don't know if you and I have ever really t talked about it. I mean, we might have, and I just forgot because it was so freaking long ago. You want to know something, Greg? I think you and I have been friends since WrestleMania 25. Have we? Give or take. At That's least since 26. Nine, right? No, we've been friends since at least 26 because I remember you telling me you went to 27, and that was like a year after I'd known you for at least a year at that point. So, I don't know, but... uh I mean, what did what did you think of twenty five? Mm, well, now, <laughs> well, sure, I mean, just just real quick. Uh, I mean, like other than other than Shawn Michaels and Undertaker, I hated it. Hmm. I thought it sucked. I gotta watch it back because yeah. most of this I don't really remember. I mean, the Money in the Bank was cool. I liked it. Yeah. Uh, Wrong guy won. <laughs> Who did you expect to win or want to win? Christian. Ugh. Sh yeah, sure. But... Like Punk needed to do it again. That was oh. stupid. Oh, this was number two. Yeah. I usually don't. I usually don't complain about the winners of matches. I was like that was dumb. It's like really. Yeah. Which. <laughs> this wasn't the one because was it the previous year that Hornswoggle ate it from Mr. Kennedy? No, that was two years ago, or two years before. Oh, okay, because I see Finley and Hornswoggle, and I'm like, well, Mr. Kennedy's not here, so it c couldn't have been this year. 
But yeah, that's another thing. Too many of the same repeat guys and all the money in the banks. Yeah, looks like we had one really fantastic match. A, in my opinion, a crappy Intercontinental Title match. A freaking battle, damn battle royal that we'll have to talk to talk about. A so-so triple threat for the world title, and then that freaking main event, man. There's yep. too much to talk about with that damn main event. But yeah, so we'll we'll get into all of it. It will be something to talk about, man. But that is next week. WrestleMania 25. Wrestling. Thank you for joining me here today, Greg. Yeah, it was fun. This was Except those tag matches. An experience. Now, I hope you all like the new succinct format. We're going to be trying to, you know, change some stuff up for y'all moving forward. We'll stick with what works. We will get rid of what does not work. And as always, hit us up on social media with your suggestions and your likes, your dislikes, all that stuff. We love the feedback. We want to hear from the listeners. Bro! Always time for air horn. We will see you all next week. Later! Later. This has been a Drama City production.